Pora rozłączni. Prepare of judges. Rozłączni się swoje plany. Judge number one, Miss Erika Topolski, Canada. Rozłączni się z dwa. Judge number two, Mr. Tobias Spangl, Austria. Rozłączni się z trzy. Judge number three, Miss Anna Sobunen, Finland. Rozłączni się z cztery. Judge number four, Miss Anna Paszewa, Slovenia. Rozłączni się z dwie. Judge number five, Miss Hakla Björn, Sigurd Dorf, Dorfir, Iceland. Rozłączni się z dwie. Judge number six, Miss Sasha Martinez, Mexico. Rozłączni się z dwie. Judge number seven, Miss Masako Kubota, Japan. Rozłącznie číslo 8, judge number 8, Mr. Jaromu Prince, Netherlands. Rozłącznie číslo 9, judge number 9, Ms. Miloše Šafánková, Czech Republic. Technický zbor, technical panel. Technický kontrolor, technical controller, Ms. Mr. Attila Sos. Techniční specialisté, technical specialists, Ms. Lina Kaldeška and Mr. Vladi Balia. Welcome back to Ostrava for Czechskate 2022. Today is the third and final day of competition here at the second event on the International Skating Union's Junior Grand Prix Series. And yesterday, the pairs and the men's titles were decided with Japan's Nozomu Yoshioka triumphant in the men's competition. And it'll be his compatriot, Mao Shimada, who hopes to repeat that success later today in the women's free skate. She will be joined by 34 other skaters from 29 different skating nations in the Women's Free Skate coming up shortly. Welcome back to the Ostravar Arena here in Ostrava in the Czech Republic. This amazing arena was built 36 years ago and then renovated extensively between 2003 and 2004 and making it a fitting venue for this ISU event, the second competition on the Junior Grand Prix Series, the International Skating Union and the Czech Figure Skating Association hosting a fantastic competition as we head into the third and final day of events. And there, the judges. 
We've seen 27 different judges from 20 different countries descending upon this location for the three days of competition. And there, the starting lineup for the free skate. 35 women, starting with Vietnamese Lin Can Tran. And there, the lineup as we proceed through the women's free skate. Three entries from the Czech Republic. With Michaela Vrastikova, the leading Czech, going into today's competition. And heading in now to what will be the last group of skaters with Mao Shimada. Having a very strong nine point lead after the short program. She was Miss Merrick in her Lion King short program on Thursday. And of the five women in this first group, wonderful to see representation from Bosnia Herzegovina, Vietnam, New Zealand, Moldova. Great to see representation from so many different skating nations. Malaysia with Catherine Ong Hui Kwan. She will close out this first group. And the skaters on your screen will have had their official practice this morning. Their group started on the ice at 6.45 this morning in the main arena. That one of the downsides of ranking lower in the short program, the earlier start time. So likely that these young women will have been warming up in the venue from 6 a.m. And then hopefully they've had the chance to go back and rest before taking to the ice for the competition itself now. And there, Marika Armstrong from New Zealand. And now, on your screen, Zara. You set Zinovich. Some of the skaters already have had Junior Grand Prix experience. And it really is a different level of competition than International Skating Union. And all of the team doing a wonderful job at creating a special event. Not just is the location in itself impressive, this arena boasts almost 10,000 seats with incredible ice quality. But so many other factors that are pertinent to the specialness of the competition. Even with the skaters having to become acclimatized to having our cameras in their faces, the ISU team, the media team, working hard to give social media content as well. And if you're following us online, you'll have seen some great behind the scenes footage. Check out the ISU social media pages. And we would love to hear from you. And the hashtag JGP figure will help us to see any questions that you may have, any comments. The only sadness this week that we don't have the incredible Ted Barton here hosting the event. He's busy as ever back home in Canada and he will join remotely next week when the event goes to Riga in Latvia and the next stop of the Junior Grand Prix series. And we look forward to the turn of Ted Barton. Ted, one of the most gloriously positive influences in the figure skating community. And I'm sure he will be delighted to see representation from so many different skating countries. As we see Marika Armstrong warming up her double axle. The women's competitors had a day off yesterday. They competed their short program on Thursday. 
but many of them came to the venue not just for their practice yesterday but also to support the other competitors yesterday saw the start of the ice dance competition with the rhythm dance and it will be the ice dancers who will close out the event here in Ostrava with the free dance following the women's free skate And as is common practice, often after warming up the jumps, the women use the closing moments and seconds of the warm-up warm to work on their spins. Some changes to the calling from the technical panels on the spins this year. And as you'll have heard us say, new Olympic cycle, so skaters being asked to do Ladies, some different types of features. Guarantee the maximum level four. First to say, representing Vietnam, Lady Can Tran, Vietnam. Lynn Can Tran from Vietnam. We'll start the women's free skate. 17 years of age, an elegant skater, and she will skate to the music in the Mekipa by Celine Dion.
Lovely to see the smile on Lim Can Tran's face, the first Vietnamese skater on the Junior Grand Prix. And she struggled in the short program, but showing elegance and really embracing the moment, waving to those supporting and applauding her. And lovely to hear the compassionate appreciation for what she offered here from the audience. Then obviously, with the same technical level of difficulty as that which we will see from others, but an elegant skater, and a very lovely choreographic sequence which we'll hopefully get to see on the playback. And as we look at the opening to her free skate, you can see body awareness and presentation to the Celine Dion music. She fell on the double loop in the short program, and although it wasn't the best grade of execution for that double-double combination, much better than Thursday's performance. Here, a double saco, pitching forward there, forces the judges to be down on the grade of execution, but... And here, just single loop, single loop, single loop, but this was lovely, demonstrating Wonderful flexibility through the choreographic sequence, through that spiral. And a lovely neckline in the back bend within that Ina Bauer. And she's been training in Europe for a few weeks before this event, preparing herself to compete here and proudly represent her country. A big well done to Lin Can Tran from Vietnam. She turned 17 in June of this year, so she'll be eligible to compete again next season on the junior ranks. And alongside her coach, Arno Mussini, she'll be working hard, I'm sure, in training to develop the double axel and the triple jumps that we will see from others who are yet to compete. Technical panel just reviewing and assessing some of the levels assigned to the elements. Levels will be given to each of the three spins. And Lynn securing two level threes and a level two on the spins that she performed in her three and a half minute free skate. This course, please. Lynn Khan has earned in her free skating 39.41 points. Her total competition score is 15.79 points. Thank you to Lynn Cantran for elegant skating to start the women's free skate in Estrava. On the ice, representing Bosnia and Herzegovina, Zara Vucetinovic, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Presenting Bosnia and Herzegovina. I saw Zara at breakfast this morning and she looked happy and delighted to be here as she starts her free skate to the music The Sound of Silence.
And an appropriate end position for Zara skating to the sound Zara of silence. And another skater, second of the two, delivering what I'm sure will be closing in on her personal best. Zara having a big smile on her face there, wishing Marika, the next competitor from New Zealand, good luck as she leaves the ice, greeted by her coach. You can see the flower girls really embracing the experience as well behind and choosing to acknowledge their appearance on screen as well. As we look at Zara, who opened up. With the looks you can see, she opens up as a, what we call a toe axle instead of a double toe. So there'll be implications on the rotation called by the technical panel on that jump. And the same there on that double loop, double toe attempt. Here at the flying sit spin, the sit forward feature. Maintaining good center there from Zara in the flying sit as she changes into the next difficult feature, sit behind. And Zara had 11 elements as do all of the women competing in the free skate. Here she takes a rocker turn, a back outside counter attempt, and then up into double flip. Unfortunately, just a fall off of that element. But the skaters somewhat free to choose what elements they attempt. Zara choosing to do Axel Euler double sapo there. And they'll elect elements based upon their consistency in practice. So Zara not attempting double axle here. I'm sure she's working hard on it in practice to get it consistent enough for execution under the pressure of the competition. And as I said, yeah, breakfast this morning, Zara looked happy, but looks even more elated now with the pressure of the event behind her. And like Lynn Cantran, Zara is 17 years old. Sorry, 16 years old. It'll be her birthday in a couple of weeks' time. So Zara will have two more seasons on the junior scene.
she choose to stay at this level and we hope to see her if not again on the Junior Grand Prix Series next year. Hopefully with an increased technical element score as well. And she assesses the performance with her coach, reliving what just happened. And as with all the competitors, after the event, and indeed almost instantly, Zara will be able to get a detailed the feedback race. from the technical panel and the judges. On the ice, representing New Zealand, Marika Armstrong, Novizela. Marika Armstrong, taught by her mother, Rosanna Armstrong, all the way from New Zealand, skating to the wonderful hometown glory by Adele.
New Zealand's Marika Armstrong finishes her free skate. And I'm sure she'll have been satisfied to stay up on both the double axle attempts, the first double axles that we've seen attempted here in the free skate. Just unraveling a little bit towards the end. And we have to assume that Marika will have had her training affected by the travel to get here. It's distinctly possible she won't have had many opportunities over the last week to run through this three and a half minute program as she's greeted by her mother and that a special photograph for the family album. And some lovely touches, some sentimentality to the music and choreographic awareness there as you see Marika is stepping up into her double axle just a little under rotated there and the same applies for the double toe at the end of that jump combination. Here, double flip, double loop, and again, just a little bit of the rotation done on the ice. As we see, and what's delightful here, you'll see in the back of shot, a nod of approval from her mother, glad that she stayed on her feet, I am sure. Cannot comprehend how her mother watches, not just her daughter, but her student. Her mom competed at the World Championships herself. As you see that Charlotte spiral into the double loop's double toe. Shame at that point. Fatigue setting in for Marika. And a whole family affair for the Armstrongs. Her family founded the Paradise Ice Skating Club and Ice Rink back in 1974. And Marika's grandfather, Ross Blanc, involved in helping support ice skating in New Zealand. And just such special times for mother and daughter. And it looks like they've got a great relationship. It must be a precarious line to tread, teaching your child to skate whilst teaching them to navigate life as well. And great life experience traveling over here from Auckland to compete in the Czech Republic. Please. A little delay in finding out the fate for Marika Armstrong. We don't know her personal best. She hasn't competed on the Junior Grand Prix before. Marika has earned Free skating. 47.08 for Marika Armstrong. And she leads after the first three skaters in this women's free skate. Maria Grebenich from Moldova. The 15-year-old will skate to the soundtrack from Pan's Labyrinth.
Maria Gibranic from Moldova completes her free skate. And we saw the first triple jump attempt in Maria's free skate. She attempted triple loop in her short program. Didn't go for that, used the Salco here in her free skate. And it looked particularly towards the end of the program that with every jumping past success, she sent a smile towards her coach ringside. And as with all of the competitors, Maria and her coaching staff work towards choice of elements. This opener double flip, stepping into her double axle. You can see again, as we see with others, so far rotation still left on the ice. That's something that the technical panel will consider when assessing the value of the element here. The triple cycle attempt, not as good as in warm up. You can see at least half of a rotation down on the ice. But Maria had good speed, lots of length through the takeoff of this double flip. And you can see the air position, not as tight as we'll see from those that attempt the multi-rotation jumps. So room for movement. She went for double toe loop here and again too. You can see lots of room for which to make that a triple, hopefully in the not too distant future. Indeed, Maria did have a planned program content that included a triple toe. So you can see that's definitely something that's doable in practice here. Traveling threes into the loop and twizzling out of it, trying to integrate good composition for the program component scores from Maria. Maria has earned in her free skating 52.77 points. 52.77 for the Moldovian Maria Grivinic, and she leads. As we look to the final skater in this first warm up group of the women's free skate. Next to skate, representing Malaysia, Catherine Ongui Kwan, Malaysia. The delightful Catherine Ongui Kwan, 16 year old who was so vocal about her appreciation for competing at this stage and to represent Malaysia. She will skate to Debussy's Claire de Lune.
Catherine Ong Pui Kwan from Malaysia. And Catherine explained to me that she has had an ankle injury this season and she's still recovering from that, which has inevitably hampered her training. We'll get to see on the replays that Catherine is definitely capable of more than was offered here today. But you can see, even with the mistakes, she understands that she needs the difficult element content and the gamble as to whether to include that or not is always a risky one. Skaters can choose whether or not to dilute the technical element score and play safer to secure better grades of execution or to attempt the harder elements as Catherine did with the likes of this opening triple loop, but then suffering that fall incurs a mandatory one point deduction. Here, electing late in the program to do the double loop, knowing that she's obviously capable of triple. But given her limited training time due to that injury, electing to do the simpler double, but avoid a negative grade of execution. And Catherine trains with Jonathan, Jonathan Kassar in Los Angeles. See here his influence with that inner bar movement that then led towards the latter part of the program. And again, the decision to do a double cycle. Previously, she tried the triple and manages to cling on to the double axe at the end of this. This was a shame as fatigue set in. We cut away from what was that? Frustration for it just towards the end of the program. But Catherine, delighted to be here, delighted to be representing Malaysia, and grateful to the support that the Federation has given her. And great to see her choosing two such different music choices. She used Libor Tango for the short program, and Debussy's Claire de Lune, so elegant and delicate, in complete contrast to her short program. And the judges will have assessed how the choreography reflected that music choice. Judges giving three component marks this season as opposed to five in previous seasons with a mark allocated to Catherine's composition, Catherine's presentation, and finally Catherine's skating skills. And given the education and influences that she has in the States, I'm sure Catherine well aware of what needs to be done moving Business forward. Series. And hopefully we'll get to see her again Fair on the Junior Grand Prix series. And you can perhaps hear the reaction to the first Czech skater, Lucy Datlova, who will skate in this group of six women. And they too will have had a practice this morning. 
with their practice starting at 7.15 a.m. in this main rink. So by the time that they left their practice at 7.45, time to cool down, stretch a little bit, and potentially head back to the hotel. Not a huge amount of time for them to then fuel up and prepare to come back and compete in the free skate. And you can see in the women competing, all of them presenting themselves beautifully, elegant costumes. I think for most of those in this group, the hair pulled back into a bun, makeup applied, just to present themselves at their absolute best in front of this judging panel. And for those new to the sport, these incredible dresses come at great expense. And the skaters will work with their costume designer to design these outfits at the start of the season when the music choice has been made. And then they will take these precious costumes to each and every event for this season. Ooh, getting a bit close on warm up. And for many of the women competing, each of these intricate designs adorned with Swarovski crystal. And sometimes they can be incredibly heavy as well, based upon the designs made and the crystals applied. So as we head towards the second group of six groups in the women's free skate here in Ostrava, we're likely to see more triple jumps attempted within the competition now. As yet, I don't think we've had a clean triple of good grade of execution. But you can see there, triple loops being attempted and do intend to see some triple loopses. Zala Groom, who will skate second in the group, plans that as her third element in the competition. And sometimes the plan program content is with a developmental perspective in mind from the coaching team. You see Andre Lutai speaking to his Bulgarian student, giving technique to help her nail the triple jump she intends to do in her program. All of the skaters will, in practice, be pushing their technical element score, attempting the more difficult triples. So each of the triple jumps has an assigned base value and a triple loops comes in at a base value 5.9 and a triple toe loop the easiest of the triples coming in at 4.2 points so each of the skaters in practice will be working towards mastering the more difficult triples and indeed later today we may see triple axles and indeed there is potential for a couple of quads to be likely performed in the closing group of the competition and those difficult elements carry more points value. It's just at what point the coach and the skater decide to use that within the context of the program. I was chatting to Nikolai Mamola, the Italian man, who was on the podium yesterday in the men's event. He said that he's capable of landing quads, but whenever that's input into his plan program content, the physicality of those difficult elements and the mental strain of comprehending it has an impact on the rest of the elements, so it's not always wise to take that risk and take that gamble. So in Nikolai's case, he elected not to include a quadruple jump and it served him well as he secured a medal for the Italian team in the men's event. And 
we enjoyed a really strong men's free skate yesterday. Nozomu Yoshioka was the champion, and he included two quads in his free skate yesterday. And then Nikolai Mamola, second place for Italy, with Andreas Norback from Sweden clinching the bronze medal. Veronica Ferlin from Poland, the 14-year-old. She struggled with the triple loop in the short program. That's her first planned element in this free skate. And she'll skate to you. Raise Me Up by Josh Groban. When I Veronika Ferlin from Poland. And she smiled in reaction to her free skate and that she should four big triple jumps in her free skate. And I really liked her triple cycle double toe combination from the short program. 
And our triple circle, double to double loop, even better here in the free skate. Just wonderful to see the reaction from coach. As I said, she struggled with the triple loop in the short program. And as touched on in warm up, that's, I assume, developmentally her hardest triple at this stage. You can see not comfortable on entry and not fully rotated on landing. But I'm sure it won't be long before that's added to her technical difficulty. And what I really like is the drive and commitment to elevation. Here, the first of her four clean triples, good elevation on the triple style, maintains flow to the double toe, and still manages after the double loop to have a bit of a running edge here. This, the double axle, and again, she's quite aggressively driving up into the air to create a big jump. Almost over-rotated, causing the landing to be a little bit short. But good work. This, the triple toe. And as with the Salco and the axle, a visible elevation with the right leg driving up. This is the second of those. Getting some decent running edge on the back of that. And looking at the judge's analysis of what was done. Great height on that Salco. Looks like a positive grade of execution for Veronica on all of her four triple jumps. So the judge is satisfied with takeoffs and landings and the jump technique that Veronica has. So well done to coach and student. Seventy point seven nine for Polish skater Veronica Ferland, and she's comfortably into first. On the ice, representing Slovenia, Sabrun Slovinsko. Zala Grum from Slovenia, just thirteen years old. And she will skate to the soundtrack to the magnificent century.
Congratulations to Zala Groom. Zala Groom, Slovenia. And I think Zala, potentially one of the most physically fit and trained coming to this event. She maintained speed, indeed accelerated, even towards the end of the program when she must have been burning inside. The lactic acid in the legs built up so early in the programs. And she did a really admirable job of keeping up the flow and the glide for the skating skills. She has good body line. And you can see here, better triple loop than in warm-up. We saw her struggle with that in the warm-up. She struggled with it a little bit in the short two. Double axle Euler, double salco, and a nice landing position. Attempted loops. I think that's still earlier in its development. And you can see a little bit of caution and hesitance into the second triple loop and a little short of rotation. But here, triple sacco, double toe. She fell on the sacco in the short program. So despite that little mistake at the end of the combination, she'll be happy to have stayed on her feet here. And she has conviction and attack through the split jump, part of the choreographic sequence. Just did not show any signs of slowing down at all as she sits in the kiss and cry with coach Katarina Burja. He's giving her a seal of approval with a cuddle. David Sade started well in the men's for Slovenia as well. Katarina, coach, works hard. Alongside choreographer Yirana Ipak Jan, who's a brilliant influence on both coach and skater. Technical panel reviewing and assessing the rotation on the triple jumps, and it looks like most of them just coming up a little bit under rotated, which brings down both the base value of the element and then in turn the grade of execution. So it might not be the score that Zala is hoping for at this stage, but a little bit more training time, a little bit more repetition on the triples. And the score sheet could look very different in the not too distant future. This is her first year the on the junior team. scene. So huge learning Zala ground and learning opportunity. 62.30 points. Her total competition score is 96.17 points, so she is currently in second place. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Iceland, Yulia Silvia Gunnardotter, Islam. From Iceland, Yulia Silvia will skate to the beautiful music to build a home and in this shirt by the Cinematic Orchestra and the Irrepressibles. She needs 70.33 to keep her lead over the others that have skated so far after the free skate.
Well, terrible disappointment for poor Julia Silvia. Gunnar Stadir from Iceland. Five falls Julia in the program. Silvia. And just, I think, Iceland. a lack of confidence in her jump technique at this stage. 17 year old. And being 17 in itself can be challenging. Never mind to put yourself up for judgment at an international figure skating competition. And I think there's a little bit of work to do on her self belief for these big jumping passes. This was the opening double axle, not fully rotated on that. And then into a cycle which was fully rotated, but just not a belief to nail landing. Later on, an intended triple toe turned into a double. And I really, really enjoyed the composition of Yulia's short program. She had such intensity. And looking back at the results of the short program, as you see this fantastic body movement within the choreo sequence, great to see that some of the judges really went with the composition of the program. Some of the judges going as high as 6.75 out of 10 on the component scores for composition. But unfortunately, the requirements of the technical element score having a big impact and three falls in the short program in each of the jumping passes signifies that Julia's struggling with her technical element score at present. Don't think it's a huge lack of technical or technique Maybe just some, as I say, mental self-belief on her abilities. And hopefully she'll be able to recognize the positives from the event. The likes of that 6.75 in the components from a judge in the short. Testament to the fact that they can see past the mistakes on the elements and recognize good construction of choreography. Based on her social media, I think Julia Silvia is a, a competitive guitarist as well, so a musician, and that musical appreciation was definitely evident, particularly in the short program. Harder to maintain that musical sensitivity during the more physically exhausting free skate. Three and a half minutes for the free skate. And many more jumping passes, which can be pretty cripplingly exhausting. Coached by Benjamin Aguiar and trains in Reykjavik. And he will have to work hard to help build up his student. He's done a good job on the act of the skating, just you can see there. She almost gestures towards her head. Let's hope we see her return to the Junior Grand Prix with lots of increased self belief. On the ice, representing the Czech Republic, Lucia Daklova, Czech Republic. The first Czech representative in the women's free skate, Lucy Daklova. And the 15 year old will skate to the ghost of you.
Well, congratulations to Lucy Dathleva for coming back following three falls at the start of the programme and digging deep, still having conviction to the rest of the technical elements and the component scores. And for me, it's a better programme for Lucy than the short programme she seemed more comfortable and at home with. The Carol Emerald music. And at the beginning, you can see storytelling, emoting towards the judges, pushing that presentation mark up. And a good check after the three turn for the triple circle. And here you can see the Ina Bauer as transitional content, multi directional skating. And she does that other into triple toe, but unfortunately, another mistake. Second circle. And down again, and at this point, you would be forgiven for understanding if she gave up a little bit, but didn't do that. The double axles were more of a friend to her. The first one with double toe, the second one without having to put the double three turns in between. Change of edge, one of the features you use to get the level four on the combination spin and an impressive eye spin pickup, keeping the rotations going. And good to see a smile. Certainly not the lack of ability. You could see that the triple circle definitely doable for Lucy. Lucy has earned So third on the free skate and third overall overall for Lucy Datlova, the first of three Czech Republic skaters in the women's free skate. On the ice, representing Mexico, Regina Garcia de Leon Saab, Mexico. From Mexico, Regina Garcia de Leon Saab, 26 after the short program. And the 15-year-old uses Jan Tiersen's Amelie.
And a perfect musical finish for Regina Garcia de Leon Saab from Mexico. A disaster with a double axle in this short program. And got two of them out here as she's greeted by Doug Hall, her coach, who's been a wonderfully supportive influence here for her in Ostrava. And she was successful with the triple cycle, double toe in the short. And again here, choosing to do double loops. So I'm sure in training, she's working hard on the more difficult triples, including this one. Doug said that after the that the triple loop after the short program. She had success with the loop in practice yesterday. Not today in the program, but that'll come. A good double axle oiler, double salco. It clings on to a second salco. And this cantilever spread eagle, really impressive, as were all of the spins in the program. Positive grades of execution for all three of Rahina's spins. And having seen her in the hotel restaurant, I assume with her father, perhaps a family member, you realize the enormity of this international travel for her, her family, and all those supporting her to compete on this stage. I'm really lucky to have that positive influence of Doug alongside her. Doug will then travel on to support some of his other students at other competitions, or who he works with at the Ann Arbor Figure Skating Club. The students, I'm sure, will miss him. But he will return there. And off to the next events in the season for many of the coaches. They will be busy traveling <laughs> both domestically and internationally to various different events now that the competitive season is underway. And it's the blessing and the curse of having a great coach. They tend to be very, very busy with multiple athletes competing in various different locations. Technical panel finished the review of Rohina's free skate. And some under rotations could be problematic for her total score. Personal best from Courchevel last year was 76.9 in the free skate looking like it'll fall short a little bit of that judges deeming the skating skills in the high threes so some work on the amount of power and speed when she returns to her training rink 61.21 points her total competition score is 96.96 points and she is currently in third place Into third place for Last Rohina. As we head to the final skater in the second group of women in the free skate, Maria Manaba from Bulgaria. Who will skate to music from Les Miserables.
An impressive finish position for the Bulgarian Maria Manova. Four triples and a double axle in her free skate. She has good speed, respectable skating skills, using the incredible soundtrack to Lee Mez. I don't think the composition of the program fully embraced all the potential that the music had, but you could see an occasion here at the start that Maria definitely enjoys the music choice, and hopefully as the program develops, as more run-throughs are underway as the season goes on, some more transitional content can be added. Nice and easy double loops. At the beginning of the program, followed up with a light and airy triple salco with a good GOE on that element. The second triple, triple toe in combination with double toe. And you can see spread eagle, difficult entry, but just popping open the intended double axle. Second pass at the axle, a little scratchy on entry. Looks like that's a lesser favorite for her than the Salco and the Toe, which were more successful in this. And she skates at the Denkovitz Tavisky rink. Denkovitz Tavisky, the two-time Bulgarian world champions in ice dance. And lots of potential for this Bulgarian Maria Manova. She just attempted a double loop in the short program as a mandatory double or triple for the women to attempt in the short. But I'm sure she and her coach, Andre Lutai, will be working hard on that and the triple flip and the triple loops in practice to increase that technical element score moving forwards. And as the competition season is underway now, I'm sure programs will be reviewed and increased transitional content added as well. Well, given that her skates didn't arrive with her at the start of this week, an impressive performance from Maria Manova in Bulgaria, who will close out the first two groups of women in the free skate. And as we go into an ice resurface, we urge you to stay and enjoy some of the highlights from yesterday where you get to see which team won the pairs event and the success for Japan in the men's event. And following that highlights reel, we move towards an interview with the winners of both the pairs, Baram and Chiumentseb, and then onto an interview with Nozumo Yoshioka from Japan, who secured the second title for Japanese men on the Grand Prix series so far. And then come back for more performances in the women's free skate here in Ostrava. Day two started with the beginning of the ice dance competition and Japan's Naokida and Masaya Morito looked utterly joyful with their new personal best of 61.05 points, en route to potentially winning Japan's first ever medal in ice dance on the Junior Grand Prix circuit. Delight from the Japanese team was shared by Brits, Phoebe Becker and James Hernandez, who scored a massive personal best for their tango and flamenco rhythm dance that boasted an impressive level three midline step sequence for both of the youngsters from London. The event was won decisively by Mratskova and Mratsek in a phenomenally mature performance by the home nation skaters. Their 70.83 points in their rhythm dance is a bigger score than any posted from the Junior World Championships earlier this year, which suggests this will be a very successful season for the brother and sister team. The first medals on the Junior Grand Prix series for the pairs discipline were decided today with the results of the short program remaining the same after the free skate and Canada's Chloe Panetta and Kieran Thrasher showcasing gorgeously expressive skating to another love by Tom Adele to win their first Junior Grand Prix medal. Kayla Smith and Andy Deng staved off the Canadians to maintain second place after the short program, and they are scheduled to compete next week in Riga, where they will be eager to achieve more points to stand chance of selection to the Junior Grand Prix final in Torino this December.
A 31-point lead overall marked an emphatic win for Bram and Chumentsev from America. The team delivered superior program component scores, belying Bram's young 13 years of age. And we look forward to seeing them return to the Junior Grand Prix in Gdansk later in the series. A closely fought short program paved the way for a brilliant men's free skate, with Sweden's Andreas Nordback winning the first Grand Prix medal in the men's event for Sweden, with a total segment score of 212.37 points. The elegant Italian Nicolai Mamola jumped from fourth after the short program to secure his first Junior Grand Prix medal. Two triple axles and the highest presentation marks of the competition will boost his confidence at this early stage in the season. Second after the short program, Nozomo Yoshioka followed the success of last week's winner, his compatriot, Shunsuk Nakamura, to claim the title here in Ostrava. Two quadruple toes in his free skate to the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack helped him garner a new personal best and the gold medal to round out day two at Czech Skate 2022. Sonia, Daniel, huge congratulations. You must be delighted. This is the first Junior Grand Prix of the series this season and the first Junior Grand Prix ever for you both. How do you feel with your win here? Good. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to expand on that, Daniel? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely excited. Uh, I think this is something we've all been working for for a very long time. Um, and to see all this hard work pay off finally and start our journey. Um, on the Grand Prix, on the Junior Grand Prix series, is the dream come true. So I think we're very excited, very happy with how we performed in our debut. Um, yeah, and looking forward to our next Grand Prix. <laughs> Amazing! And your coaches, Todd Sand and Jenny Mino, they are multiple-time world medalists, and you train with the current and the reigning senior world champions. So surely, you are destined for greatness as well. <laughs> Have you got goals for the rest of this season? What things do you look forward to for the rest of the season? Uh, def <laughs> uh, def definitely, definitely try to learn from the little mistakes that we've had in this competition and continue to improve upon in our future, you know, uh, errors that we have or continue to progress forward. Um, probably our, our goal for the net is this continued season, just keep doing our best, trying to show what we're capable of and just going out there and having fun. Amazing. And when, when do we get to see you on the Junior Grand Prix next? What's your next event, Sonia? Go on. Um, the one in Poland. First one or second one? Second. I believe second. <laughs> <laughs> Good that you're keeping it right. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you have been incredible here. We're so grateful for what you offered and I wish you all the very best for the rest of the season. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. So we're here with the winner of the men's event, Nozomo Yoshioka. Huge congratulations. How do you feel after the event? Oh, thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. He's very happy about it. Understandably so, understandably so. And were you inspired last week in Courchevel? We saw your compatriot Shunsuk Nakamura win the title. Did that inspire you here at this event? あの、クシベルで坂本選手、シュンスティックが優勝しましたけど、それがインスパイアされましたか。ああ、イエス。日本チームがすごく良い結果だったんで、自分もその良い結果出せるようにしないとなと思いました。ジャパニーズチームディッ
今日2回の4回転を跳びましたけれどもこの先それよりももっと増やしていく予定はありますか Yes And which will be your next event? Do you have another Junior Grand Prix assignment? この次のジュニアグランプリのアサインメントはありますか予定はありますかポーランドです。ポーランド、グダンス。Well, thank you so much for your brilliant skating here and I wish you all the very best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you.
The following skaters may now take the ice for their warm up. From Indonesia, Kelly Elizabeth Subban. From Kazakhstan, Nuria Suleiman. From the Czech Republic, Katarzyna Halushova. From the Czech Republic, Mikhail Rashtakova. From Italy, Chiara Minigi. And from Germany, Olesia Ray. Welcome back to the Ostrovar Arena for the third of six groups in the women's free skate. And we've seen some strong performances from those that have competed already. But as we head towards the latter stage of the competition, we can expect to see both some increased technical element scores and program component scores based upon the results of the short program. So for those of you less familiar with the sport, the starting order for this free skate is based upon the results from the first portion of the competition, the short program. And the women competed two days ago in their short programs. And there are seven elements required in the short, but 11 to be completed within the free skate. And this women's free skate has to be three and a half minutes in length, plus or minus 10 seconds, so they can go up to a maximum of 3 minutes 40 or 3 minutes 20. And indeed, in regards to the music, the skaters can often use professional music editors to trim down the score. Indeed, the final competitor on the last group, Maria Manava, used music from the Les Miserables soundtrack, and that will have had to be edited down and it's often a big challenge to get the optimal sections of the music that the skaters want to use into that shortened version. Thank you to those of you who have been getting in touch online. The International Skating Union is on social media channels and on the YouTube channel. You can send us some comments and questions on there as well. We've got some technically intense ones that have come through. Thank you to at Mari Gauhart. She asks, sometimes there is a letter after the spin level. How does that affect the technical score? So, what that's referenced to is in the PDF after the skater has completed their performance, the technical panel will give feedback on what was accomplished. And when it comes to the spins, and there will be three spins in the free skate as there were in the short program. There can be a letter V put after the spin and that has a few different reasons for that popping up. If the spin was a flying spin, there needs to be a clear visible jump. And if that isn't evident, then the sign V will be put in place and that has a knock on impact on the value of the element. It will reduce the value of the element and those values can all be found on the ISU communications page. And the skaters will know only too well the values of what they deliver. Another time when that V sign might come up is if the skater hasn't completed three revolutions on each foot when there's a change of foot required. So if the technical panel deem that there haven't been a complete three revolutions on each foot, the V sign will be put in place. And again, the impact of that is then shown on the base value of that element. So much education and training is given to the officials here at the event and technical controller looks over to technical specialists who will assign the levels to the elements. Another big factor for technical panels is the rotation completed within these jumping elements and you will see if again if you look at the results and the detailed scores that are given to the skaters you'll see sometimes there's a cue put down after the jump and that's whereby a quarter of the rotations or one of the rotations is completed on the ice and then there are arrows one or two arrows dependent upon the amount of rotation not completed in the air. 
And again, just like the V on the spins, that will have a reduction on the value of the element. So we've seen some of the skaters who've competed already today, they've stayed up on their triple jumps, but maybe a little surprised and disappointed with their total segment score, and that's often as a result of a deemed lack of rotation on said triples. Another question coming in. Why are women not allowed to jump the same jump content as men in the short program? Really interesting one and up for lots of debate. But no triple axles um, for the women in the short program at this event and indeed Lots of debate as to why that might be, but if we look back at the history of skating, Triple Axel first done in the men's competition back in 1978, and then just a decade later, Triple Axel's readily seen in the men's competition and indeed used by Brian Boitano to win his Olympic title in Calgary in 1988, and then used by every other male figure skating world and Olympic champion since. The Triple Axel in the women's category performed by Midori Ito from Japan in the late 80s, but not nearly as readily evident. However, times may be changing, and we hope to see some triple axel attempts in this women's free skate in the Junior Grand Prix in Estrava. But that's the warm-up completed. Five skaters leave the ice. Leaving fresh, clean ice in this fantastic venue for 19-year-old Kelly Elizabeth Supangat. And she will use the Cruella de Vil soundtrack. Thank you. 
Cruella de Vil for Kelly Elizabeth Supangat. An interesting choice Kelly for a young woman who's so effervescent and positive off the ice to choose to inhabit the character of Cruella de Vil. And she did it well. Much simpler technical element content for Kelly Elizabeth and that than that of some we have seen so far. But she benefiting from being in this group thanks to a cleaner skate than others as you look at her opening double axle. And this the second, good forward outside edge, good drive up. In combination with the double toe. And just the most fascinating tales from Kelly about her training experiences in Indonesia. As we see a good layback. She says that she has to share the ice with the hockey. I told this tale yesterday in the short program. Just amazing though. As you see her outside spread eagle part of the choreo sequence. And shortly a really impressive hydroglide. Just here. Just incomprehensible for some of the other athletes in this competition to consider sharing ice with ice hockey. A little bit dangerous at very least and also a huge impact on her ability to train at maximum capacity. And so major respect to Kelly Elizabeth for sufficiently getting enough training time and despite those circumstances to represent Indonesia here on the ISU Junior Grand Prix and she should be very proud to find herself in this third group in the free skate. This course please. Kelly Elizabeth has earned in her free skating 55.02 points. Her total competition score is 89.93 points and she's currently in sixth place. 89.93 total score and into sixth place for Kelly Elizabeth Supangat. On the ice, representing Kazakhstan, Nuria Suleiman, Kazakhstan. Nuria Suleiman, the 16 year old. She will use the music Ancestors.
What a bright performer. If you see in the top left-hand corner of your screen, though, a few too many of red boxes in regards to the technical element score. However, a real joyful presence on the ice. And as I said in the short program, she has really beautiful feet. Points her toes exceptionally well. Lovely to see Nuria smiling as she leaves the ice. You can see interpreting well to the ancestors' music. And it was evident the composition, the presentation suggested the style that she was going for. You can just see here scratching on the toe as she steps up into the double axle Euler double flip combination and some hesitance as we see her going now into the triple loop. Now this was considered downgraded in the short program and under rotated here. So more rotation today than there was on Thursday's performance. And just moving ahead, Nuria will be looking to showcase a little bit more conviction, speed and flow into the Salco, which too was deemed as a little under rotated. But you can see she continues from the element with choreographic intent on this, the second of the triple loops. And again, scratching into that double axle, but no question on the rotation there. And this was excellent. Love this donut feature in the camel. And then the back layback. That's a rarity, not something that many will go for, but lovely to see. And here to sit forward. And some innovation through the featured spin positions for Nuria. So moving forward, I suspect the technical element score will govern more of her training time. She looks to have the program component score comprehension well underway. Nolia has earned in her free skating. Sixty-five point six one for the skater from Kazakhstan, third on the free skate and third overall. Just breaking the hundred barrier for Nuria Suleiman. On the ice, representing Czech Republic, Katarzyna Manushova, the second of three Czech skaters in the women's free skate. Is 13 years old, Katarina Hanasova. She just gets to paint it black.
Well, delighted screams from her supporters, Katrina Ahanasova from the Czech Republic. And a complete contrast to Nuria Suleiman <laughs> as the Flower Girls greet her. Nuria Suleiman had a greater focus towards the program component scores. You can see, though, no question on rotation or issues with the amount of rotation done in the air for Katarina. As with all the jump elements, quite visible prep, but this triple toe, really solid in combination with double toe. And at this stage, you can just see checks out from the composition and the presentation of the program to prepare and ready herself for her most difficult triple, the loop and does it well. So sacrifices the presentation mark for the technical element score. And you can see that again now, a very visible prep into her clean, clean triple saco. Just fascinating to see the difference. That was the inside axle. That's really cool. That unlisted jump used as part of her transitional content. And she did pack in a little bit more transitionally towards the end of the program. But again, you see that long, telegraphed entry to the double axle. You could argue, though, totally worth it because the jump element was clean. <laughs> so well done to Katarina Hanasova, just 13 years of old, 13 years of age, and we'll see her develop for many seasons ahead, hopefully on the Junior Grand Prix circuit. And she puts pressure upon the next skater, Michaela Vrastakova who also represents the Czech Republic. This person, please. Katarzyna has earned in a free staking 73.07 points. The general competition for is 113.07 points. A total of 113.07 and Katharina leads the field at this stage. Next to state, representing Czech Republic, Mikola So the front running Czech representative after the short program in the women's event, Mikhaila Vrastakova. She will open with an intended Triple loop to tout l'univers. Thank you. 
And that's that sigh of disappointment for Mikhaila Vrastakova. She has some fabulous elements. The opening triple loop is just so, so big. But fatigue is setting in a little later in the program. And more mistakes than the previous competitor, her compatriot, Katarina Hanasova. So we'll see how it pans out. And I'm sure both Czech women eager to be selected for the major ISU championships towards the end of the season. Barbara Vrankova was the Czech representative at Junior World. She's just 16 years of age, and I'm sure she will endeavor to compete again at that stage. This huge elevate. I mean, that's just massive room for a quad on that triple loop. Really impressive. And the same applies to the triple cycle. Back three Mohawk entry. And you can see just big, big elevation. Michaela trained with Rafael Aratunian in the summer just a month or so ago. As you see her go through the split jump within the choreo sequence. And she said that gained massive inspiration and motivation from the Olympic champion Nathan Chen. That choreo sequence was brilliantly in time with the music. And that should be reflected by the judges when it comes to grade of execution. It just remains to be seen stronger skating skills and composition than Katarina. But will the falls be too costly for Michaela? Let's see. Good technique. I just love the elevation on the saco and on the toe. But legs had lost their conviction to nail that landing of the second triple toe. I'm sure the Czech team buoyed by the knowledge that the Czech ice dancers leading the field after the rhythm dance and the dance event to follow this. This first, please. Michaela has earned in a free skating 69.41 points. Her double competition score is 109.85 points. And she's third, place. third place for Mikhaila Vrastakova. <laughs> and Katarina Hanasova leads for the Czech Republic. On the ice, representing Italy, Chiara Minigini, Italian. <laughs> Chiara Minigini. She delivered a relatively clean skate in the short program, just not the triple content that she wanted. She plans to open with triple loops, double toe loop to the music by Hans Zimmer.
Chiara Mendigini from Italy and suffering from a similar kind of fate to that which she yeah. had in the short program. Late in the program here, she managed to retake the triple flip. Got a few too many pop jumps. So definitely potential and quality from Chiara. Good component scores, but not yet delivering a consistency on the jump elements, and that's why she shrugs her shoulders as she returns to her coach rink side. And you can see here, commitment to the presentation and the composition of the program, and that back outside pivot, and an intensity that is impressive for just 14 years of age. But this was intended to be a triple loose, one of the most difficult triples, but just pops that into a double, and here, Stepping out of the double axle was meant to be Euler triple circle. And that, just a single flip. Later on in the program, though, she dug deep and managed to hit the triple flip. But as we look again at these replays, you can see her musical awareness. Judges looking for musical sensitivity and timing, and all of that movement was that. Here, triple flip. Little Overrotated with the body and a double three turn out of that, but evidence that she can land the more difficult triples. <laughs> Anna Pizzetta from Italy was the Italian representative at the Junior Worlds in March. I'm sure Chiara wants to be considered in contention for that kind of event in the future. Good camaraderie between skater and coach in the Kiss and Cry area. Definitely better to see laughter than the tears. First Junior Grand Prix for Chiara. And after she's completed the performance, she will have the chance to sit back, watch and learn from some of the more experienced competitors who will follow. She trains in Murano. No doubt, I'm sure, gains inspiration from Italian skating legend Carolina Costner. Second place for Chiara Minigini. As Hannah Sova continues to climb. Alessia Array demonstrated real potential in the short program. An all-rounded skater with good skating skills. Mistakes made on the jumping passes found her 19th place after the short, looking to move up as she skates to the prayer, and sorry, indeed, the matrix.
A very talented oh, Alessia Ri from Germany. She's really good fundamentals demonstrated within this young woman. Good skating skills, nice aesthetic style across the ice, and good jump technique as well. She competed at the Junior World Championships. You can see that the opening triple loop is that. I'm sure will become more consistent and comfortable as the season progresses. Double axle, triple toe, and later, really good step forwards into double axle. Euler, triple saco. And you can see good landing positions here. The loop, a little bit of the rotation done on the ice. She just has a wonderful back line, wonderful arm line through our basic skating skills and this camel catch feature demonstrates good speed and I love the height of the free leg within this camel side. I'm sure the judges will be forced in this combination spin to give a good grade of execution. Judges looking for speed and acceleration during the spin and good controlled clear positions like the one that Alessia shows now and the music Phrasing evident, as you can see, reacting to the change in the music after the spin to her choreography by Adam Solia. Here, the Sako. You can see she's just surveying the amount of rotation that was left on the ice and knowing what impact that will have. This is her second year as a junior. Good use of the blade on the forwards crossovers. So she will be well aware of what is necessary to successfully compete at this stage. Personal best from Junior World Championships was 80.30. And there she is with coach Julia. Done a great job. And I'm sure moving forward as the season progresses, Alessia and Julia will be working on the triple loops to open the program here. No triple flip this in the planned program easy. content for Alessia. Oh, it will be far off being included in her programs. Not giving much away with the reaction, but Alessia Ray leads with a total score of 127.25. The following skaters may now take the ice for the warm up. From Switzerland, Neumann Jos. From Austria, Hannah Kram. From Netherlands, Julia van Dijk. From Slovakia, Vanessa Schoenkova. From Israel, Daniela Binder. And from Finland, Rosa Reponen. The next group of six women taking to the ice. And you can just see in the distance them warming up and mentally and physically preparing for the free skate that they will take after the six minute warm up. Noemi Yus will be the first to take to the ice after the warm up, and she, the first of two sisters competing here in Ostrava. And for so many of the competitors, it really is a family affair. Many of the coaches are parents to their students, such as the incredible commitment that needs to be made by the families. And there, a unique choice of costume. Skaters can't lose any part of their costume on the ice, otherwise they will incur a mandatory costume deduction. So this is the fourth of the six groups in the women's free skate. After this group is completed, there will be another resurface before we head towards the final two groups of skaters. We get to see Mao Shimada, who was utterly brilliant in the short program. 
She has a nine point lead over second place. And she intends potentially to use triple axle and quadruple toe loop in her free skate here. And some of the competitors will have another Junior Grand Prix assignment later in the calendar. Everyone vying to get into the top 10 to secure a point. 15 points for first place, 13 for second, 11 for third. Then to one point for 10th place competitor. Do get in touch online, send us questions. Let us know what you're loving about the Junior Grand Prix. Leo van Dijk from the Netherlands, just warming up her triple loots, chatting with Kevin van der Peren. One of the coaches who works with Yulia and just said that she's an incredibly hard worker and that, of course, something that every coach wants in their students. And indeed, an absolute necessity to be as good as these young women are. We've been able to appreciate, thanks to the diversity and range of abilities shown on the Junior Grand Prix, just how incredibly difficult what these women do is. Big range in training time for the different athletes. The skaters are asked to submit information for the International Skating Union. And then on their biographies, they can let us know how many hours of training they do each week. And we've seen that vary from three hours per week from some to 36 hours per week to others. So it gives you an indication of that vast differences in approach to the sport and arguably that made a little bit easier dependent upon their nationality or some of the skaters figure skating is one of the nation's favorite sports and for others virtually unknown and we've seen skaters from indonesia vietnam and they've been some of the first to represent their skating federation and we know that the International Skating Union is working hard to increase popularity and awareness of the sport. And no better celebration for that than the intended World Ice Skating Day, which will take place on the 4th of December later this year. Everyone really excited about that date in the calendar to celebrate this glorious sport, not just from elite athletes like these, but from all types of participation. Certainly there's a buoyant and popular recreational skating community as well. And many loving the sport, whether they aspire to compete or not. Ladies, your warm-up has ended. Please leave the ice. Last triple loop has been squeezed in to the warm-up to boost the confidence for the athletes leaving the ice now. First to stage, representing Switzerland, Norby Jules, Zoltan Kellerman encourages his first student competing here today, Naomi, Noemi Yus, 14-year-old from Switzerland. She will be another skater performing to Deep Prayer by Celine Dion and Andrea Bocelli.
Noemi Yus from Noemi Switzerland. And she did well after an opening fall on the starting triple loop. She managed to stay up on five triples. The grimace in her face that indicates she knows there were lots of negative grades of execution within the elements that she did do. She's an elegant skater, and I think this piece of music would suit her. But understandably, the impact of the technical element score put a little bit of a dampener on the performance. Here, going for triple loops, bailing and turning it into a double on two feet. But did well to come back from that disappointment. Triple circle, double toe, double loop. Ideally, judges want to see lots of flow and glide coming out of the element to help boost the points value. And this to flip, you can see there the foot landing short of rotation. And all of these have an impact on the technical element score. That better, the triple toe, double toe combination. And the technical panel reviewing that right now, as we see an elegant spread eagle, difficult to do, use this transitional content to lead into the next triple toe. And another skater who's offered totally different stylizations between the short and the free skate. And it looks like Noemi has an artistic sensibility to be able to interpret well. But still, early days of development, still really conscious and mindful of the needs to enhance her technical element score. First year on the Junior Grand Prix, And it looks like having had composition score in the short program over five, looks like it's a little down on that here. And that's normal, it's understandable. When an increased technical difficulty happens, the skater's focus is distracted to those elements and steers them away from the performance score. And that's something that we'll be able to enjoy seeing the development of in these athletes as they head towards the senior ranks where the marriage of both program component scores and the technical element score find some equality. <laughs> Zoltan, a little bash on the head for the mistakes made. And not only does Noemi have good coaching staff, but she has her sister for support as well in training, and I'm sure really push each other forwards. 73.19 Second place for Noemi Yus from Switzerland with 117.07 points. That's her total score Austria, here in Czechskate 2022. And we look now to Hannah Frank from Austria. She attempted a triple-triple in the short program. She will use Beethoven virus for her free skate.
Well, great excitement to see this talent, Hannah Frank from Austria. Hannah Frank, Austria. Austria, not renowned for his female figure skaters. Had success with the Olympic champion in 1972, Trixie Schuba, but this lady, Hannah Frank, has something quite special. Even just down to, absurd though it may seem, the costume choice too, the bravery to go for something a little bit different. And I really appreciate the commitment to interpretation. That, the opening triple loops, we saw her land that just at the tail end of the warm up, but couldn't complete it here. But nice running edge, nice landing position on the quality of that double axle, double toe. And good elevation on that triple style, double toe combination. And the spin's the best that we've seen for sure. Really good grades of execution in that donut in the flying camel spin. And again, good drawback, good height and length for the triple toe Euler double flip. A little bit of travel on the layback, but judges really want to see good speed. And that evident through the difficult variation. And there's her difficult exit. New this season, changing edge in the camel, just really brilliant spinning. Novelty and creativity with the positions. Maintaining speed as she changes feet. And picks up into the eye spin, showcasing her amazing flexibility as well. She says gymnastics is one of her hobbies, and you can see that perhaps impacting upon her range of movement. She also plays the piano, so that enhances her musical awareness and amazing choice of different music. She had Metallica for the short program and Beethoven for the free skate, so a broad spectrum of interpretation for just this young 13-year-old. Excited to see how she develops. Hannah has earned the free skating 80.73 points from the free her total competition score is 126.51 points, and she is currently in second place. On the ice, representing the Netherlands, Julia van Dijk. Julia van Dijk from the Netherlands. She has a bold combination, triple it, triple toilet plan to start her free skate.
Julia van Dijk from the Netherlands with potentially the best double axle technique that we've seen and may see in the competition. And then later in the program, having a nightmare on that element. So very mixed output for her free skate, but so much admired equally a triple loops to start the program that will of course a great frustration. And then much later in the program when she will have been more physically fatigued, a comfortable looking triple loops in combination. So very mixed bag here. The opening with the choreography by Maya Luther. This the loops, <sighs> nasty fall. And this, look at that high. Oh, nice. Doing the back counter, moving on with body movement after it. And here you see transitions in and out of the arms. Rocker, back counter, and three turn into triple flip. Just having to pitch forward and then a bit of an axle, double toe axle, sketchy situation going beyond it. So amazing moments of glorious technique interspersed with moments she'd care to forget. Managing to cling on, tight triple loop, similar to that that she had in the short. Wobbled going into the loose and yet now... Excellent. So, it makes results, but when she gets it right, Yulia van Dijk will be a force to be reckoned with, 20th at Junior Worlds earlier in the year. And if, if and when she can deliver on all of the technical elements, I think she'll easily go over the 100 mark in the free skate. Not here today, but look forward to seeing how her season unfolds. And as I mentioned before, she has lots of positive influences alongside her coach in the Kiss and Cry. Kevin van der Peren, former Belgian champion, working with the team. Aliona Savchenko, 2018 Olympic Paris champion, intending to help the Dutch skaters as well. So, so much positivity for skating in the Netherlands. And they've got talent like Yulia to see it come to fruition over this next Olympic cycle, heading towards the 2026 Winter Olympics in Italy. Yulia lists meeting with friends as one of her hobbies, and I'm sure that's hard to find time for when she keeps up with her schoolwork and her heavy training schedule. She cites her training as 18 hours per week the in Dordrecht. So, coach accepts, given the mistakes, a fair 81.98 for her, 0.98 points for Julia van Dijk in the free skate. And in less than a point, she leads Alessia Ray from Germany. On the ice, representing Slovakia, Vanessa Shonikova, Solenskova. 15 year old from Slovakia, Vanessa Solenskova. Her personal best is 80.48, so she'll need a new PB to maintain her lead.
Just finishing a little behind the music for Vanessa Shamakova from Slovakia. She looks disappointed, but lost to Admar. A really easy looking triple loot started the program. She doesn't look satisfied with that, so. Obviously, expecting more, and we don't know what's been happening in practice leading up to this event, but this. Nice tight air position. Good draw back for double toe. And second element, changing edge, back three turn Mohawk into triple flip and salvaged a tight landing with a double toe. And then repeats that flip. Second one, a quarter short in rotation. Effortless looking on the double axle on that bullet point for the grade of execution from the judges. And you can see in the back of shot her coach there with the cuddly toy as support. And as we acknowledged in the short program, Vanessa rotates in a clockwise direction, less conventional. This is a big element, double axle oiler, triple saco again. Some of the rotation done in the ice. Back Bielman. Less conventional as well. Most of the skaters will take the Bielman position on their forward foot. But she has other features to use with difficult spin variations abundantly available for Vanessa. There's amazing musicality with the double axle within the program. So composition of the program was good, choreography aware of the music that she used, Forbidden Love. It's sad to see how deflated she looks, but given her personal best came at a Junior Grand Prix last season with 80.48 in the free skate, I think she's gonna beat that here and maintain her lead. She was 14th at both her Junior Grand Prix assignments last year. She came into the free skate here in 15th place, so she'll be looking to not just maintain that position, but move up. So Vanessa Samokova from Slovakia keeps her lead and looks to see what is to come, if she has any chance of moving up above her personal best result on the Junior Grand Prix. Another 13-year-old with the performance already starting before the music. Gabriela Grinberg will use music from Cirque du Soleil.
Uh, difficult skate for Gabriela Grunberg from Gabriel Israel. Israel. She's just 13, had her birthday in April. And so much pressure on such young shoulders. And sad to see that it didn't showcase her ability here in Ostrava. No doubt she's deserving of being in this group after the short program. She's really good flow, really good ice coverage. So skating skills, very evident. And she's greeted by Alexei Kiliakov off the ice. You can see lots of speed. Impressive. Nice transitional content with the Ina Burr as she comes round now to what was a very good triple toe. Good, really good technique, solid, solid technique. Just slipped off landing. There, the triple circle was good, but the double axle failed her. And it's tough to acknowledge, or difficult perhaps for those that aren't as readily involved in the sport to recognize that although there were lots of mistakes, she does have good jump technique. Just at 13 years of age, she can't have been doing these triple jumps for very long. So still inconsistent and unreliable. And Kilikov is coach to the Israeli ice dance team. He will compete in the free dance later, but not coach to Gabriela. So you have to potentially assume that she's here with her coach, who may be on the screen. <laughs> so lots of novelty and unique experiences competing on the Junior Grand Prix, potentially without a coach in a different country. So many things to consider and contend with. And a massive learning opportunity for young Gabriela Grunberg. And although this will not be a score that she'll be delighted to hear, her potential is evident. Scores, Gabriella has earned in the free skating. 72.32 points. Her total competition score is 120.16 points, and she is currently in fifth place. So Gabriela drops to fifth place. We look forward to seeing her again on the Junior Grand Prix. Rosa Repponen from Finland. She had a strong triple loot in her short program. She'll rely on that good jump technique again here as she skates to on a slow boat to China.
six triples for Rosa oh. Repinen. It's getting to end the mood at the end and fun to hear some upbeat tunes for the free skate. We've heard a lot of intense music. And Rosa choosing something a little bit more uplifting. She responsible for making the Swifties happy yesterday using the Taylor Swift champagne problems for her short program and entertaining us with her music choice here. That allowed her to deliver really well. Just maybe some rotational issues. That was the opening triple flip. She had two triple lutzes. As I said, she was successful with the lutz in the short and it served her well here in the free skate. And a big combination of double axle, triple toe. This is the second of the Lutz. Uh, yeah, I think that was okay. Fully rotated there. So it will receive the full base value. And that triple circle, double axle. Just had to do the double three turns in between that and the third jump in that combination sequence. So, one of the features for the layback choice of spin, she's changing from side to back, goes blade to head. And then here, difficult exit, finishing with a back inside counter, and then I think she did a forward inside bracket there. And that one of the features, difficult exits, can be used now this season to amass the highest of levels, the level four in the spins. So Rosa was fourth at the Finnish Junior National Championships. So there's been so many strong Finnish women competitors. I remember back to Alyssa Dry and Susanna Poikio, Elina Ketanen, and more recently Kira Korpi, who represented Finland so well at ISU championship level in the past. And Rosa looking to replicate the successes of her predecessors. She's not competed at the Junior Grand Prix. She's had lots of international experience already in 2022. She's competed internationally three times, just off the medals at each of those events. Fourth at the Coup de Priton, fourth at the Talent Hotels Cup in Talent, fifth at the Nordics in Copenhagen. So she's ready for success at this level, and I think she'll be eager to make the Finnish team for the Junior World Championships. That's held in Calgary in Canada at the end of February and into March in 2023. Lenia Seder was the Finnish representative at Junior Worlds in Estonia of this year. Just to give an idea, her total score at that event was over the 160 marker. So that will be, I'm sure, a big goal for Rosa and her team. Lenia getting 104.92 in her free, free skate in talent. The score is please. And Rosa Repinen doesn't look to be too far off that with her free skate here at Czech Skate 2022. 92.56. And, and a total of 140.85. And first place for Rosa Repinen. And that concludes group four with two more groups to come after the ice resurface. And during the resurface, stay tuned and share with us some of the ISU Elements Explained videos. We head first to Bergamo and the center of excellence there with a look at some great information on the Salco jump. And then 
on to China for another in the ISU Elements Explained series where ISU technical specialist Fang Dan will talk about the split jump, which we've seen used already plenty today as transitional content for the women competing here. And finally, we'll get the chance to relive the interview with last week's winner, Hannah Yoshida, who was so brilliant in Courchevel, France on the first stage of the Junior Grand Prix. So stay tuned. And then we look forward to welcoming you back for the final two women in the free skate here in Ostrava. Hello everybody and welcome to Center of Excellence Ice Lab in Bergamo, Italy. Today for the series Elements Explained, we're going to talk about Salco. Salco jump takeoff. We start from the back inside edge. After the takeoff, it's followed by one, two, three, or four revolutions. And then we land on the opposite foot on the backward outside edge. Most important thing is your stability on back inside edge. So let's follow with the first exercise. We're gonna skate backwards on the inside edge and we're just gonna do little hops. We're gonna try to be really stable on the skating foot. Next tip is how to turn during the takeoff. So we're gonna get back on the circle. We're gonna do consecutive double three turns. To learn how to turn. Next step is you take these double three turns and you add a little hop and you try to land always on the same foot. To get additional height on the salco, try on the takeoff to bring your free leg knee really high and then switch to get the most height of your jump before you start rotating. Thank you guys for watching. I hope these tricks will help you with your Salco. Uh, remember to check all our videos and follow ISU on social media. And that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Ciao. Hello, I'm Fang Dan from the ISU Beijing Center of Excellence. I'm the ISU Judge and the International Singles Technical Controller. Today, we are learning split jump. A split jump is the sequence of body movements in which a split is performed in the air after swinging the supporting leg around as a skater jumps. can achieve the split jump following the mohawk or the forward outside three turn. The quality split jump needs a height that the topicking leg supports and a good flexibility of the body. The skater should push your legs up into a split position in the air. Now let's see the skater's demonstration. That's all for today. See you next time. Bye bye.
Congratulations, wonderful performance, beautiful skating. How did you feel after the triple axel at the start of the program? I wanted to land it clean, so I'm gonna do it in the next junior gram. Amazing, amazing, fantastic. Now I love both your short program and your free skate. Wonderful choreography for both. Which do you prefer? Do you have a favorite, your short or your free skate? Um, I like the short program because it's so fun, but I like the long program because I can be Princess Leia. Ah, you can be Princess Leia, fantastic. Yeah. Well, great Princess Leia that you made. Now, what comes next? Do you have another Junior Grand Prix assignment? Yeah. Where will that be? I think it will be the um, Erevan. The, the Yerevan? Yeah. In Armenia? Amazing. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to seeing you skate again. Wonderful, beautiful skating and we can't wait to see more. So thank you very much. Thank you.
Welcome back to the Ostravar Arena, where the penultimate group takes to the ice. And lots of excitement as we head towards the closing stages of the women's free skate, with the most successful competitors after the short program getting ready to skate their free skate. And this group of women will have had their allotted practice time this morning in this amazing main rink. Five past nine till 9.35 this morning. 30 precious minutes to prepare mind and body for the free skate here. As you see Vivian Papp from Hungary warming up her double axle or their double flip combination sequence. Sorry. And from then they will have inevitably returned to the hotel to rest and get ready for the free skate and that often a chance for so many of the competitors to be able to switch off in between practice and main event and allow the body to recover. Some of the competitors competing here in Estrava will then go on immediately to compete in next week's Junior Grand Prix. And for those that have traveled far to Europe to compete in this event, it makes sense logistically to go back to back events, but it can take such a lot of physical and mental and emotional toll on the skaters with little downtime to recuperate from the exertions of the event. Some of these skaters will spend in excess of three hours per day on the ice and that's not possible at these competitions. As I mentioned today, the skaters will have had a half hour practice session and the same was made available to the women yesterday in their day off from competition. Indeed, each of the women on the ice now had an official practice. At 3.05 yesterday for 35 minutes in the practice rink. The scheduling delivered by the ISU is so exact and well-timed. And in that 35 minutes, skaters will have had opportunity to run through their program. But often on location at an event like this, the skaters wouldn't choose to do a complete run through because it can have such an impact on them physically, conserving some of their energy for the event itself. It's rare that you would see any elite athlete perform a full run through with all elements included during an official practice and instead electing to take sections of their free skate in the morning or in any of the official practices leading up to the main event. And the assumption being that adrenaline will help the skaters push through the three and a half minutes of free skate that they have to do here. The notion of run through, the words run through can sometimes strike fear in skaters' heads. But if trained well, it's likely that they'll do at least one of those per day to gain sufficient fitness levels for an event of this caliber. And we saw last week in Courchevel in France the impact of the altitude on the skaters competing there. Competing at altitude physically more demanding and we saw some of the athletes struggling towards the tail end of their programs. Oh. Good save there between the athletes. Everybody's so desperate to make sure that they get their chosen content in. The warm-up isn't judged at all, just opportunity for the skaters to Ladies, there is one minute left in your warm -up. prepare as best they can with some of the athletes 
repeating their elements multiple times over, some of them taking a more casual and relaxed approach. Ramod Dupuy from Canada. Bringing up her double axle. And great transitional content there from Vivian Papp. So the leader at this stage is the Rosa Repinen from Finland. Her total score for the event is 140.79 points. Ladies, your warm-up has ended. Please see the eye. Just ahead of Slovakia's Vanessa Samakova. Yaying Cheng, China. Yaying Cheng from China. She secured 49.67 points in her short program. And now she will open to the music. Chujin, Beginner's Mind.
And well done to Jia Ying Cheng, opening the penultimate group with another solid skate to follow the short program she laid down on Thursday. She elected planned program content that included two triple loopses later in the program with intention to receive a boost on the base value of the elements. Judges reward jumps done after the halfway mark with an extra boost in score. Given how much harder it is to do when physically exhausted. But Cheng, obviously well trained coming into this event. Just using double axle as warm up. And then here, the mistake on the flip maybe sense that she wouldn't have the greatest of skates, but after that, everything else successfully done. Not the most optimal air position, and this triple circle axle axle sequence probably wasn't what she was after. I'm sure she would have liked double axles there. You can see the air position just a little leg wrappy, and the judges do have a reduction chart. And if it's a poor air position, they have to drop a little bit on the GOE. In the second of two triple loopses, and that testament to how well trained she was. <laughs> Didn't compete at Junior World Championships, and indeed, we haven't seen her on the Junior Grand Prix circuit before. But Jia Yang Cheng, looking like she'll comfortably take the lead and potentially compete for a top 10 spot here in her first Junior Grand Prix. Cheng lists her hobbies as reading, dancing, and debating. The total of 144.98, and the lead comfortably taken by Jia Ying Cheng from China. Sarah Maud Dupuy. She gave us some great entertainment while supporting her compatriots yesterday in the competition. And now it's her turn to take to the ice. Skating to the hundred and empire of our own.
Saramod Dupuy from Canada. And to the untrained eye, no major visible Saramod mistakes. Yes, Saramod landed six clean triples, winning Skate Canada's next gen competition in July. Just managed to get four triples here in this free skate. So the technical element score will be lower than she's capable of. But she's a, a great character and her teammates should be giving her all the aplomb after the great energy that she gave to them <laughs> competing yesterday. Saramod was team cheerleader. This opening loop switch admittedly was better than warm-up. She struggled with it in warm-up. And the loop was more of her friend than the flip today. Unfortunately, two double flips instead of two triples. Here, another one of the loops. Not as much running edge as she's sometimes capable of. And just to give context, the triple flip worth 5.3 points at base, double flip 1.8. So at least five points or so lost on those jumps. But Salko was good, an indication of the jump technique quality that she does have. And as I touched on, Saramod, capable of triple axel. She's done it in practice. So lots more to come from the 17-year-old from Montreal, Stefan Ivars, the coach, and David Wilson, the choreographer. So good influences. And interesting that she's chosen completely different style for the free skate, showcasing her versatility. She seems a really bubbly, vivacious character off the ice. A more serious approach for the free program here. This course, please. Sarah has earned a free skate. 92.06 points. So third on the free skate here. And just drops a place overall. And Saramod goes into second. Next to stay, representing Hungary, Vivian Pat. Yeah. Talk about vivacious energy. Vivian Pat was electric in the short program. Lots of online chat about how exciting this young Hungarian skater is.
Well, a wonderful performer. Opponent score. She had everything the judges would want to see with the variety and contrast of energy and movements to the 42nd Street music she used. Just a couple of falls, making it difficult to stay in contention technically. And that was unfortunate. She had a good loose in the short program, but did ever so well after that hard fall to come back to the other side of the rank and hit triple loose in combination that time with the double toe. And this difficult transition into the double axle oiler double flip. And then here, up into loop. You can just see not fully rotated on the landing of that jump. But some wonderful choreography, cantilever spread eagle used within her choreography sequence. Little hop showing that contrast of energy and movements. And this was brilliant. I love the cat spiral novelty and uniqueness of movement. Again, variety of movement style up into spiral, down into the knee slide. But unfortunately, you can see our coach there just relaying the technique mistakes on the flip. She works with Angelina Torenko and Angelina and Massimo Scali, former world medalist in ice dance from Italy, responsible for some brilliant choreography for Vivian. She competed at World Juniors, didn't make the free skate, so she'll be eager to represent Hungary in Calgary in Canada. Vivian trained in the World Arena in Colorado Springs in the summer and trained alongside the likes of Young Yu. I'm sure that experience of being alongside those seniors really motivational. As I said, some buzz online in reaction to Vivian's short program. She oozes an effervescence on the ice that is compelling to watch. And at 14 years of age, let's hope that we can enjoy seeing the development of that in addition to the likes of the triple triples, which I'm sure she's working on. And indeed, she may already have started to work on triple axle in training as well. So, lots of women, tightly packed scores, very close. Just a tenth of a point between Vivian and Sahamod Dupuy On from Canada. The elder sister from the Swiss family, Sarina Yus. She will use music from the Secret Garden.
Well, fantastic skate for Serena Yus from Switzerland. And she looks totally composed in reaction to that clean performance. You have to assume then that is a regularity in her training. She looks unfazed by what was a fantastic clean skate. And delight for coach Zoltan, following some disappointment for her sister earlier on in the competition. And the highlight for me was the midsection to the east of Eden music. As we look at the double axle triple toe combination. And she used her easier triple jumps early in the program, saving the likes of this triple loops in combination with the double toe and the double loop for later in the program. And then this flip double axle, securing that extra 10% here during the East of Eden music. Spiral transition into a perfectly musically phrased triple flip that allowed her to really express and ooze some better presentation. Choosing to bookmark either side of the East of Eden soundtrack with the Secret Garden. And Switzerland represented well in women's single skating with Kimi Rupond finishing in the top 10 at the Junior Worlds earlier this year. And that then facilitates two spots at next year's Junior World Championships for Switzerland. And I'm sure Serena or, and or her sister will be vying to take that place. I'm sure it governs so much of their family's life, but undoubtedly having a sibling in your day-to-day -day training must make life easier, at least to push yourself to demand that little bit more. And looking ahead, I'm sure Serena Yus will be looking to add a triple-triple to the planned program content for this free skate as she moves towards the later part of the season. She was just outside the top 10 at the Baltic Cup Junior Grand Prix in Gdansk last year. She comes into the free skate here in ninth place and a performance like that should easily keep her in the top 10 and putting pressure on those above her. Technical panel just questioning some of the rotations and a little bit of an exclamation mark over the in-going edge for the triple flip takeoff. Triple flip should come off a back inside edge. So many of the skaters pressing onto the back outside edge for flip. To generate that little bit more propulsion and energy for takeoff. In the short program, Serena's triple loots was deemed as a quarter short, and that's the same fate for both loots in the free skate. That will provide her some feedback to use as motivation for the rest of the season. But smashing her personal best and breaking the 100 marker in the free skate. Great job by Serena Yus from Switzerland. On the ice representing Japan, Ikura Koshida, Yakutsuko. The first of two Japanese entrants here, Ikura Koshida. The 14 year old will skate to Samson and Delilah by Camille Sanson.
A standing skate for Ikura Kushida from Japan. Just brilliant and so musical. So many musical references throughout the program. It's a bold music choice. Samson and Delilah. And yet she articulated it brilliantly. And I, I felt a little sorry for her. After mistakes in the short program, she fell on the triple loop and finds herself coming into the free skate in eighth place as her teammates cheer her on. And eighth place is no shame whatsoever in being eighth place in a short program at a junior Grand Prix. When you come from a skating nation like Japan where they are so abundantly successful, it's all relative. And she has rebounded brilliantly. Two triple triples to start the program. And there will be reviews on rotation, but I think that was an example of somebody skating their very personal best and with utter conviction to it. I didn't hesitate, Ikura, at any point in time to see here trying to depict choreographically the story of Samson and Delilah, biblical story. I'm sure, well, you can see she has worked brilliantly with choreographer Kathy Reed. And this was brilliant. So the flying sit spin changed position on music. Such change of edge, I think, also took place on music as well. And the musical phrasing and timing that was in this element was impeccable, including that free leg extension to finish. Not that you can see there, a little change of edge, question mark over the edge on that Lutz. And not the flow and the glide as others, but there, great use of body movement within the choreo. And she didn't attempt the triple axel, but really brilliant job for the skater. Only 14 years old, spread eagle on point with the music as well. Changing direction, changing edge through the difficult move, and that on the music as well with that difficult skid. Belying the difficulty of that transitional use. And coach Mia Hamada, who we'll see again with the leader after the short. Congratulations, Ikura Kushida who has made it very possible she will move up from her eighth place after the short program. She has a 20-point lead at this stage. On the ice, representing Estonia, Natalie Langebau, Estonia's club. Online comments coming in about what a delight it is to see new talent like Natalie Langerbauer, the 18-year-old from Estonia. She will skate to the Grand Duel and Bang Bang.
<laughs> Natalie Langerbar from Estonia. It's a loss of concentration toward the end of the program. And the mistake she will regret, relatively easy. Avoidable mistake, but nevertheless, a completely different trick on the composition, choreography, and presentation to the current leader, Hikura Koshida. But brilliant interpretation to the Kill Bill soundtrack. You can see the intensity of her movement. And to me, particularly towards the start of the program, Natalie's skating skills evident. Great flow and glide. And this triple up to me, at least plus three in the grade of execution. Effortless delivery. Here the flip. And another beautiful triple up double toe. That's the choice of combination that she used in this short program as well. And here you can see the difficult entry, the change of edge, really clear. This was great. Transitioning into the Lutz with Axel. She didn't use Lutz in the short program. And I suspect that's potentially because the edge in going is a little questionable. Just sad for her that then late in the program, her easiest triple, a nasty, nasty fall, shook her a little bit. But fellow Estonian Nina Petrokina was in the top 10 at Junior Worlds earlier this year. So that too will open up two spots to represent Junior Estonia at next year's Junior World Championships. And having won the Estonian test gate, Natalie puts herself right up in contention. We saw good representation from Estonia last week in Courchevel with Maria Elise Calluver. So lots of buoyant talent in Estonian women's skating. Natalie's personal best from Finlandia Trophy last year, 84.57. I think she'll top that here, but she's gonna struggle to compete with Ikura Koshida, who had those two triple triples in her program. But great support there from Katrina Kalenda, her coach here at Checkskate. And there looks to be a good appreciation of just little mistakes, easily avoidable mistakes. And looks to be a good mindset and mentality from Natalie and Katerina. 
in reaction to her free skate here. Program construction, utilizing more difficult elements in the latter half of the program. And as I'm, the season progresses, I'm sure that Natalie will be able to deliver on the triple sacco that eluded her here. Natalie likely to compete in senior events as well. She did say the Finlandia Trophy, one of the Challenger Series events in the Espoo Arena last year, as well as the Lombardia Trophy in Bergamo. Both of those Challenger Series events, opportunity to compete against the seniors as well. Natalie has Nice to see good coach pupil relationship in the kiss and cry for Natalie Langerbauer. We head now to the final group of six competitors in the junior women's free skating here at Czech Skate 2022. Lots of buzz and excitement about the entrance here in Ostrava. Two Americans in the group and the Japanese and Korean junior champions. And they're the heavy favorite. Now Shimada has a nine point lead after the short program over Min So Kwan from Korea. With Mia Kallen from the States. Rounding out the top three in the short. And then delight for Lorraine Schild from France who finds herself in fourth place. On your screen, Elise Lynn Gracie to the elegant American youngster. Two Koreans will compete in this final group. Two Americans, a Japanese skater and a French skater. And we saw in Courchevel, the Japanese and Korean skaters dominating at that event. Just an incredibly deep field of talent for both of those skating nations. Second, fourth, and fifth, I believe, from the Junior World Championships from Korea. But indeed, it was America which was triumphant at Junior Worlds in talent. Isabel Levito is the current and reigning Junior World Champion with her compatriot. Oh, now she might have working her triple axle. Her compatriot, Lindsay Thorngren, securing the bronze medal at the Junior World Championships. And Claire Seo, also from the States, making it three Americans and three Koreans in the top six at Junior Worlds last year. Japanese skaters finishing eighth and 10th. But as we start to delve into the Junior Grand Prix series, it looks like the Japanese women will be eyeing up the title in Calgary in Canada next year. Hana Yoshida was 
beautiful in her Junior Grand Prix last week. Now, Shimada quite stunning in her short program with 71.49 points. All of the six entrants in this final group, they too, they'll have had their practice. 9.35 was their allotted time to train this morning. And at five past 10, when they cleared the ice from practice, there was a resurface before the women's event started. Half past 10. A little tight for Elise Elin Gracie from America. She will open the group. She a really beautiful style across the ice as you look at Mao Shimada. Warming up with her double axle. Ladies, there's one minute left in this warm up. And we can expect to see some incredibly difficult plan program content for all of the competitors in this group with an abundance of plan triple triples based upon the submitted plan program content. And we could see three quadruple jumps attempted here in Ostrava. Two women competed with triple axel last week in France. But no quads. And you can sense both the excitement and tension in the building. And the warm up concludes. Nervous times for both coaches and skaters. Everybody's so invested in the success of these young athletes. On the ice, representing the United States of America, Elise Lynn Gracie. Sport Elise Lynn Gracie, the 15 year old. She was a vision on the ice in the short program, but some tec technical mistakes find her in sixth place. She skates to Moonlight Sonata.
Oh, really sad for Elise Lynn Gracie. She will be bitterly disappointed with the falls in that free skate. Beautiful skater. Really elegant and with such huge potential. But just consistency issues a little bit as Naomi Narinam greets her off the ice. It started well with the triple loop and I thought this triple loop triple do combination was going to be okay. She'd struggled with it a little bit in the warm up. Good edge on takeoff. Enough speed. But just not a get out on the landing of that triple toe. This, the second Lutz, just a little over rotated with the body, not checking out. And at this point in time, just remember how young these youngsters are. You want to support them and see them skate at their absolute personal best. Ideally, we want everybody to skate just at their maximum potential. And Elise has come here with her mother and her coach. That was a horrible fall. She's come with her mother, her coach, and she's part of this USA team. And you want to make sure the experience is just as positive as is possible. And inevitably, she will be disappointed as you see her take the difficult exit with the rocker counter twizzle out of the layback. She will be disappointed, I am sure. And the score cannot be what she wants. But just no doubt, this young woman, loads of potential. And she looks like she could very well step into the same success stories that we've seen from the likes of Lindsay Thorngren. And hopefully on the back of this disappointment, she will be driven to complete even more run-throughs in training and consolidate increasing consistency and deliver a program of seven triples that I'm sure she's very capable of. She boasts some of the same beautiful style that her coach Naomi Narinam, the 1999 US silver medalist had. The scores, Third place for Elise Lynn Gracie. Next to skate, representing the Republic of Korea, Hee Soo Ha, Yishi Korea. The first of two Korean skaters in the final group, Hee Soo Han. Age 14 will use the brilliant music from the Frida soundtrack.
A wonderful cheer from the Korean skaters and fans. He's too high. Delivering here in the free skate. She had a bit of a disaster with the jump combination in the short program, falling on the triple loops. But coming back strongly here in her Frida soundtrack free skate. And in the short program, Hisu's program component scores were higher than that of Min so, who lies above her from Korea at the moment. This, lots of rotation there done on the ice. So there'll be a negative grade of execution on that, but not so with the triple loop. And you can see transitioning out of the element as with this triple flip, transitioning and transitioning in with the inner bar and out straight into this butterfly. That's a feature. Camel up feature. Changing into the donut is another feature for the technical panel. And finally, this is the fourth and final feature for that excellent flying camel spin. Triple loops, double toe, double loop. And that wonderful spike position. And using Music to Frida, the story of Frida Kahlo, the Mexican painter. So, again, a lot of storytelling to be done, and judges considering that when they give the composition component score. Judges trying to consider does the choreography reflect the music and the form? Is it a musical sensitivity? Did she portray that bold Mexican painter in her portrayal of the music? So, and see, component scores. In the low sevens for Ikura Koshida. I think Hisu may struggle to compete with the Japanese skater who opened the group. But nevertheless, she should be proud of herself, especially following the disappointment of the short program. And her coach, Hyung Hyung Choi. A very busy woman. She has had so many incredible skaters over the last year seen at Is ISU events. So a clean 170 points in total, but just dipping below Ikura Koshida for He Suhan from Korea. On the ice, representing France, Laurine Shield, Translate. Delight for Laurine Shield and her coach Malika Tahir in this short program. An incredibly impressive fourth place there. And now she will use Tango as she walks through some of the elements that she'll use in her free skate from Moulin Rouge.
And another excellent skate for the French woman, Lorraine Shield. She delivered a superb performance in the short Lorraine program. And is not crumbled to the pressure of being in this final group here and indeed risen to the occasion. She must be incredibly proud of herself and I'm sure coach Malika Tahir will be absolutely delighted. And last week, two French women who she trains with, Eve Dubeck and Nola Gozali, showed brilliant potential but couldn't deliver. And just a testament to their shared coach and what brilliant stable of students she's creating here. Triple Salco, triple touch, a little bit cat-like, a little off axis in the air. I noticed that here on the first loots. But a determined young woman who resisted temptation to put a hand down. And this the second loops. Good edge that potentially a little better even than the first. Big triple loop, double toe, double loop combination. And she just had such resilience and strength in there alongside her coach who had a difficult experience in Crochevel when her talented students didn't manage to skate at their best, but a different turnaround here and She's delivering a really good training environment for the French women. And Lorraine won the European Youth Olympics earlier this year. So it shouldn't really be a surprise to me to know that she's capable of delivering under pressure. But this top four at this stage is impressive on the Junior Grand Prix. Where will she be third at this stage? So she'll likely stay in the top six at Czech Skate 2022 for Lorraine Shield. On the ice, representing the United States of America, Mia Kaelin. Mia Kaelin from America. Another incredibly talented youngster with a brilliant short program. And there, the walk through of a very adventurous free skate, skating to the beautiful music of Experience by Ludovico Einaudi.
Well, the first quadruple jump done in the Junior Grand Prix on the women's circuit this year. Mia Callan from the United States of America with not just one quadruple toe, but two. And Kayla Smith again leading the cheer squad for the American team. And Mia really making herself a front runner for the future of American women's skating with those quad jumps. Junior world champion is the Bolivito. Doesn't have that kind of technical content. And she looked committed to it. And here, the second of them. Even higher than the first. Not the same program component scores as the likes of Isabel Levito or Lindsay Thorngren, who medaled at the Junior World Championships for Mia. But potentially that could come as she now develops the skating skills and composition of her work. She had that little dip in the program with mistakes on the triple loops and triple loop, but later came back with this triple loops and triple toe, able to rotate at such fast speed. Really impressive debut in the 2022 Junior Grand Prix. She competed last year in the Junior Grand Prix 7th in that Kosice event and 6th in the Baltic Cup in Gdansk. But putting herself up in contention for a medal. The mistakes that were made and the lower program component scores could make it difficult for her to stay on the podium, but definitely strong performance. She met Ludovico Ainaudi earlier this summer when his tour stopped across the street from her rink. And she uses Ludovico Ainaudi's brilliant music for her free skate, as so many skaters do. And great to see that she was introduced to the legend that he is. Who seem to be very appreciative of her talent using his music this season. Met Mia's mother in the hotel and she here to support her daughter, just saying what incredible stress it is for the parents to cannot comprehend how hard it is to watch your child under this level of pressure, but I'm sure she is immeasurably proud of Mia. The scores, please. Mia has earned in free skating 116.61 points. Her total competition score is 116.61. So, 116.61. And Mia Callan, despite the two quadruple jumps, slips just behind Ikura Kushida from Japan. Next to skate, representing the Republic of Korea, Min Song Kwon, Yishi Korea. The second Korean in the group to compete. And it might be no surprise to you that she'll be skating to the Cats soundtrack.
What a brilliant performer Min Sung Kwon is. Completely different approach to her training mate. He Su Han, who skated to the Frida soundtrack. And they're great to see the reaction from the audience and her fans. It was a brilliant interpretation to Cats. And when we look at the program component scores, judges have to award a presentation component score. And that requires expressiveness and projection and musical sensitivity and timing. And when you look at this young woman, Min Sao Kwan, that criteria she had in abundance. Not the same level of skating skills, flow and glide as others, but presentation here with the lip syncing it. Try to see. The commitment to that was really brilliant. Good rotation. Look at that. Such commitment to the choreography and the composition of the program. So, to me, two out of the three components at least, super strong. You can see there, oh, that's perfect stylization, and it's so difficult as the entry into the flying camel. Just not, if, if we really nitpick, not the same level of skating skill, not the same amount of mastery of the blade or flow as Ikura Koshida, who we've seen, the likes of Hana Yoshida that we saw last week. But at 13 years of age, Min Sao Kwan has a bright future. And Min Sao Kwan maintains at worst her silver medal position that she had from the short program. Last to skate, representing Japan, Mao Shiana, Yakuza. Well, a phenomenal talent. And another 13-year-old, Mao Shimada, was glorious in the short program to the Lion King soundtrack. And now, classical music for her free skate.
Mao Shimada, named after the great Japanese world champion Mao Asada. And she absolutely living up to the name. Just a wonderful example of good technique, good skating skills, mesmeric spinning. And yet, despite her utter brilliance, I'm sure that she and coach Mia Hamada will still be disappointed that it wasn't quite perfect with the fall on the quad toe as Nozomu Yoshioka looks on the winner of the men's event, looking on at the likely winner of this women's event here in Mao Shimada. She opened the program with triple axel and testament to her. It didn't look like her optimal takeoff, but so well trained. She nailed the landing. Long preparation for this quad toe. Fully rotated. Uh, judges actually putting that down a slight under rotation. Textbook BDIs seeing a little bit of the rotation left on the ice. Back spiral entry into triple loops with the most stunning landing position. And here, her change foot combination spin, which had so many plus fives, the maximum grade of execution for many of the judges in the short program, and you can see why. <laughs> Junior world record in the free skate from Sofia Akateva is 157.19. Shimada won't get that here. But I'm sure her eyes will be upon that as the season progresses. And she looks elated with 141.16. But I predict that she will go much higher as the year goes on. Congratulations to Mao Shimada, the winner of the second Junior Grand Prix here in Ostrava. A brilliant women's event. And again, we see a Japanese winner with Mao Shimada taking the gold and Akura Koshida moving up to secure a second medal for Japan with the bronze here. Elise Lynn Gracie, fantastic skater, but unfortunate to drop down out of the top six as we look lower down to some of the other performances and many even, although they find themselves lower down the rankings, skating some close to personal best performances here at Czech Skate. So the free skating complete and we look ahead to now the ice dance competition and lots of excitement with the Czech team leading the way after the rhythm dance. But before the free dance takes place, we head now to the resurface, an opportunity to look at an interview with last week's winners. Actually, my mistake, everybody. We have a resurface break now. Chance to catch your breath after all the excitement of the women's event. But we return with the free dance, an opportunity to see if the Czechs will be triumphant in the final event on the third day of competition here in Ostrava.